Details tonight in Dominion Voting Systems defamation lawsuit against Fox News. They come from a court filing that was published late today that revealing that Fox chairman Rupert Murdoch admitted to in a sworn deposition about 2020 election lies that Fox News hosts continually pushed on their viewers. Not only that, the filing describes how Murdoch himself characterized some of those lies. CNN senior media reporter Oliver Darcy joins us along with CNN political analyst and New York Times senior political correspondent Maggie Haberman and First Amendment attorney Lee Levine, who uh, is so well respected. He's worked for basically every media company uh, in the United States, in particular for Fox and for CNN in past cases. And we appreciate him being on. Uh, Oliver, what is what's in these filings that's new? I mean, this is really shocking stuff. Uh, there's a you lot. Were, in these. Even you were surprised. I mean, you've been following this stuff for years, you, but you were surprised at the things in this. I was reporting a lot about what Fox was doing in 2020, and I never really imagined that behind the scenes there would be this sort of damning information, these sort of admissions that were being made by top executives and top hosts like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, uh, and so on and so forth. In, in this recent legal filing, what we have here is Rupert Murdoch uh, calling the Trump lies that were being pushed about the election damaging, calling them BS, and then also conceding that he knew that some of his top hosts at the network were peddling this lie to viewers. In a deposition that Dominion took, and I want to read to you part of it, they ask him, you are now aware that Fox endorsed at times this false notion of a stolen election. Murdoch says, not Fox, no, but maybe Lou Dobbs, a former Fox host, Maria Bartiromo, as commentators. It's a weird Split, splitting of hairs he does. And then they go through. Fox host Jeanine Pirro, I think so. Lou Dobbs, oh, a lot. Sean Hannity, a bit. And then it goes on, and, and they say he, he says some of the commentators were endorsing it, and the Dominion lawyer says about their endorsement of a stolen election, yes, they endorsed, is what Rupert Murdoch says, all, all while he's behind the scenes saying he does not believe any of Trump's election lies. And a lot of these Fox hosts behind the scenes didn't seem to believe it either. No, they didn't. And I think this really actually exposes the fact that Fox is not, at its core, a news network. News networks, um, they deliver the truth as they know it to viewers. They do the best job to attain the truth, and sometimes it's not perfect, but that's what they do. In this case, we know that behind the scenes, top personnel knew that the narrative they were pushing to viewers was not true. And we have evidence now that shows that they did this in search of profit so they didn't lose viewership to the smaller right And they right were afraid channels. of losing viewers. Exactly. They did this so they didn't lose viewers to the smaller right-wing channels that Trump was promoting after the election was called on Fox for Biden. Mr. Levine, when I spoke to you for a 60 Minutes story last year about this, uh, interviewing the Dominion CEO, you said that this was the strongest defamation case you have seen in your 40 years of seeing defamation cases, and you have seen dozens, if not hundreds. Do these filings, how do these filings change your opinion at all? Is this still the, well, how would you characterize it now? Uh, they haven't made Dominion's case weaker. I can say that. What about Dominion's case? Why is it so strong? What, what, why, what is so damning about these, these, uh, these, this new filing? Well, I, I think you have to separate out the the news value of today's filing from the legal significance of today's filing. As a news matter, for all the reasons Oliver was just saying, this is uh, important stuff. From a legal perspective, uh, it is certainly helpful to Dominion's case, uh, but it's not a smoking gun. I, I, I have not seen in the deposition excerpts, at least, evidence that Murdoch believed that the specific statements in the specific broadcasts that are being sued about uh, were endorsed by the hosts. Uh, he's speaking more generally about whether the hosts were endorsing the idea of a stolen or a fraudulent election. And that's certainly helpful to Dominion, but it doesn't get them all the way to the finish line. Do you think that, do you see any reason that the case would not con continue to go forward? Oh, no, I, based on the hundreds and hundreds of pages that have been released over the last uh, few weeks uh, on the summary judgment briefing, I, I would be extremely surprised if a substantial number of the statements that Dominion has sued about don't make it through to a trial. Maggie, former President Trump still, uh, you know, spewing all of these election lies in his current presidential campaign. Fox News' identity is so closely tied to him. Are they going to have to correct or challenge his lies about election fraud going forward? What do you make of, of what came out today? 
I think that's the big question, Anderson, or a big question in terms of how Fox handles Trump going forward. We have seen that Fox has been moving away from Trump. Trump has barely been on Fox. It used to be that whenever he wanted to go on, Oliver knows this better than I do, whenever he wanted to go on, he could just dial into Hannity or Hannity would go interview him. Uh, other hosts would do the same. That's not the way it is now. And without Lou Dobbs, it's even less so. Um, they have pivoted toward Ron DeSantis, who they are encouraging. And basically the entirety of, of News Corporation is behind DeSantis and the prospective candidacy at this point. But that is different than saying Trump is wrong, Trump was saying the wrong things. I actually don't think, and a lawyer could speak to this better than I could, but I don't think that they are likely to start doing that because they are still in this litigation. I think they are concerned about anything they say publicly, but they're definitely in a bind just of their own making in terms of how they handle Donald Trump. Lee, uh, do you agree with that, that they, they would have to think twice about how what they say about the president's uh, you know, election lies that he's spinning now? Absolutely. I, I mean, you've seen just in the, the last few days, it's been reported that uh, they've told Howard Kurtz he can't talk about the case on air, uh, precisely because they don't want people saying things that might come back to bite them in the litigation. Mm. Uh, Oliver, the, this filing also describes Rupert Murdoch's relationship and interactions he had with the former, uh, well, advisor, I guess, the, the son-in-law to the president, Jared Kushner. He was giving information about Biden ads to Kushner before they ran. Is that right? Again, this is not how a news network is supposed to operate. Theoretically, this would be a fireable offense if someone at, you know, any other news network were to do this. But according to the filing, and I'll read to you from it, it says that during Trump's campaign, Rupert Murdoch provided Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner with Fox confidential information about Biden's ads, along with debate strategy before it was public, effectively, I would assume, giving that campaign an edge over Biden's. Uh, this is one of the many things that we're learning in, in, in these documents that show that Rupert was helping to work with the GOP. And, and another um, uh, part of the filing or the previous filing, there's a talk about do anything you can to help down in Georgia, where there is, of course, that special Senate race. So, again, this, this goes back to paint a broader picture of Fox, um, not necessarily as a news network at its core, um, but one that really works to push Republican talking points, something we've known for a while. But these, these documents are pretty damning. Oliver Darcy, I appreciate it. Maggie Haberman, Lee Levine, thank you so much. Appreciate it.